Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Ask Rob Trek where I try to answer your questions from the comments sections of my videos and if you have any questions feel free to put them in the comments below of this video and I'll do my best to answer them. And as always for everyone watching if you find these videos helpful consider buying me a coffee or make a small donation in the links below because they help me to continue making videos like this and they are greatly appreciated. So with that said let's get started. All right today I have a few questions and the first one here is from uh, Vladimir Car Photography and it says hi Rob thanks for the work on the OM1 and other Olympus products and that uh, you know that reminds me when you have questions for me uh, in the comments be sure to tell me um, which specific camera you have and or lens and accessories so I can you know uh, make sure I give you the, the best answer I can and uh, and always as much detail as possible so uh, anyhow, something is weird when using manual mode with the histogram. I recently used it with the live ND. As I was increasing the shutter time, the histogram increased two till one moment it stopped uh, at two thirds. No matter if I was at 30, 40, 50 seconds, did it happen to you? And also, uh, if I increase the shutter speed, the final picture has the right histogram, but the live one is unusable after about 30 seconds. I don't have this problem in A mode. All right, so what I think you're experiencing is actually a limitation imposed by every OM system and Olympus camera I've ever used, and I've seen it on many other cameras as well. Uh, essentially, what it is is when you're looking at the live view, you're seeing the camera's attempt to show you what it thinks the exposure is going to be based on the settings that you put into the camera. And then by proxy, the histogram is going to reflect what it sees in the live view. However, when you start using settings that are way beyond what the camera is actually currently seeing, that's when you start to run into these limitations. And that limitation is basically plus or minus three stops from what the camera is currently seeing as a base exposure or normal exposure or 18% gray, however you want to slice it. Now this is going to happen a lot more often when you're in manual mode. Uh, because it's not uncommon to use very different exposure settings than you would normally use or what the camera might normally pick for you, for example, when you're in aperture priority. However, it can happen when you're in aperture priority mode as well. Uh, but that said, no matter what you see on the live view, the final picture that you take will have the correct histogram uh, and the exposure that you set, whether that be right or wrong, but the histogram in the picture will be correct, but the live view histogram and live view scene that you see is not going to match the actual picture. So let's go into the camera and I'll show you a couple examples and it, I think it'll make it more clear. Okay, so now I'm in manual mode and you can see my settings there, 160th at 5.6, ISO 6400. And, but more importantly, look at the uh, exposure bar where it's reading 0.0. .0. So I'm in sort of a neutral gray, normal exposure. And what I see in the live view is going to match the final image as well as the histogram. So if I just take a picture, you can see that the, the final image and the histogram pretty much match what I saw in the live view. Now if I overexpose this, say, by one stop, let's say I change the shutter speed to 1 30th, you can see that the exposure bar now is showing me I'm plus one stop overexposed. And I'm still within that three stop limit. And if I go to two, uh, you know, reduce my shutter speed, I'm at two stops overexposed. We're still within the limit of the live view and the histogram capability. I could take a picture here. And yeah, that looks just like we saw in the live view, right? And same thing for three stops. I'm at one eighth of a second. And if I take a picture, that matches what we saw in the live view. However, let's say I go to a quarter second. Now the exposure bar is blinking and telling me I'm more than three stops overexposed. And I know I'm four, I'm four stops overexposed in this case because I'm controlling the shutter speed. Uh, and if, if I click down to one half a second, now I'm five stops overexposed. But I can't see any change in the live view or the uh, histogram. And it doesn't matter what I set for the shutter speed, the live view and the histogram is not going to change in this point because I'm beyond the three stop limitation. So let me take a picture here at a half a second and show you. And see, see how bright that is? 
and then look at the histogram all the way over to the right, right? So the same thing happens when you underexpose. So let's get back to the base exposure and then underexpose it by, say, three stops. And if I take a picture here, the final image matches what we saw in the live view as well as the histogram. But if I go more than that, let's say I go to one eight thousandth of a second, I'm five or six stops underexposed and take a picture. You can see the final image is much darker than what we saw in the live view. I can exaggerate this even more by increasing the, the aperture. And now the image is pitch black, even though in the live view and the histogram, you know, we have a little bit of light in there. Now the same thing can happen in aperture priority mode, but it's a little bit different, right? The reason you don't see this in aperture priority quite as much, let me uh, dial in back to f5.6 and uh, I'm going to put this in the auto ISO because this is how you normally shoot, right? Auto ISO and aperture priority. Uh, and then I had exposure comp dialed in because now the exposure bar is, is showing us exposure compensation and not acting like a light meter. If I dial in more than three stops of exposure compensation, I'm not going to see the final image on the live view. So let's go to plus three, take a picture here. You can see the shutter speed slow down to 130th and the ISO is now 25,600. But the final image looks exactly like we saw in the live view. But if I do more, if I do five stops, the shutter speed's down to 1 8th because we've kind of maxed out on ISO, right? Look how bright that image is compared to what we see in the live view and, like I said, by proxy, the histogram. So the histogram doesn't change whether we're at five stops or at three stops because we've hit that limit. And then, of course, going in the opposite direction, kind of the same thing, right? The image is much darker than what we see in the live view. And it doesn't matter if you're in live ND or not, because the same limitations will apply. And that's why uh, your histogram and image are not matching what you see in the final image. And there are exceptions, like the OM-1 has the uh, night vision mode. And then the other Olympus cameras have things called uh, uh, live view boost and stuff. And you can't rely on the final image based on what you see in the live view boost or when you're using the night vision because it fixes the uh, exposure on the live view to something totally different than what you might be setting your camera to. Uh, so don't rely on the histogram or what you see in the live view when you're using these other special features. All right, I have one more quick question here I can answer from Kent Jacuz. And it says, uh, I prefer to shoot in manual mode with auto ISO. However, when adding a flash, auto ISO does not work. Any thoughts? Yes, I have a few thoughts on this, and that's because of the way your cameras and flash work together to create the exposure. Now, if your flash is a compatible flash and TTL capable, if you were to put your flash in the TTL mode, the auto ISO will start working again. Uh, but when you're in manual mode, it's not going to work. It's going to lock the ISO to the base ISO. And that's because of the difference in the way that TTL mode works and uh, manual mode. When the flash is in TTL mode, what actually happens is the flash actually fires twice. So when you push the shutter button on the camera, the flash is going to fire, but the camera's not going to take a picture. What the camera's going to do is measure the exposure. And then once it has that exposure information from that initial pre-flash, It'll use that to set the ISO or whatever other settings, depending on what mode you're in. And it'll also set the output power of the flash. So with that exposure information, it knows what to do. And then it'll take, it'll fire the flash again and take the picture at the same time with that exposure information. Uh, however, when you have the flash in manual mode, it's only going to fire one time. And the camera doesn't necessarily know what the light output's going to be uh, from that flash. Because maybe you got it pointing up at the ceiling or you got it pointed behind you. It has no idea. Maybe it's a tiny flash, maybe it's a giant flash. Uh, it doesn't know what the output power is going to be. It might know it's at one eighth power or one, you know, half power, but it's not going to know how that flash is going to uh, illuminate the room. So it doesn't, it's not going to be able to get 
the correct exposure information uh, without that pre-flash. So in manual mode, it's going to fire one time and take the picture at the same time based on whatever settings uh, that you set in the camera and the ISO is going to be locked because the camera doesn't have the information to change it to get the proper exposure. Um, and since the flash is in manual mode, you're fixing the flash power output as well. Uh, and that's why uh, a lot of professionals, they use light meters uh, when they're doing their flash photography uh, because they, they like a little bit more control and light meters help them get that initial setting. And I hope that all made sense. It's not as complicated as it sounds, if that sounded complicated. It's, it's actually pretty straightforward. But in any case, uh, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any more questions, again, leave them down in the comments below. Be sure to tell me your camera and lens and flash or whatever accessories you have so I can uh, better answer your questions. And if you find these videos helpful, consider buying me a coffee or making a donation on links below because they help me to continue making videos like this for you and they are greatly appreciated. So thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.